over. You have to stay on for two minutes. You're live. Go, Abe. We're, we're starting with... Welcome to Sephira Ventura Midtown Gallery. Sophia Ventura Gallery brings uh, cutting edge artists to the market. And we do that through shows all over the world. We do it in Miami, New York, primarily New York. But right now during COVID, in our painting and the pandemic show, we're doing it virtually. And we have two great guests today. But first, let me just make an announcement. This Wednesday, September 9th, they're starting a virtual show on abstractions. And I believe these are two of the artists that we have today of the five that are in the show. So Neil, you want to introduce our two guests? So first, um, Al this is Alfonso Segovia. He is in America and Geraldine Lally, and she is in Portugal. And it's a pleasure to have both of you with us. We are going to start our interview with Geraldine. So Alfonso, we're going to put you into the corner for a minute. You're going backstage. Okay. And we're going to start with Geraldine, okay? Okay. I think they're putting you backstage. If not, you're welcome to sit and watch. So Geraldine, what an amazing story. An attorney at law in intellectual property. At the age of 30, you developed a rare blood disease. It was expected, as you told me, that you would die. And with no known treatment at the time, you were suddenly healed. No explanation and there was nothing in your blood anymore. The doctors were amazed. I have seen your works and they are breathtaking. And today you say that if you don't paint, you are not alive. It is vital like breath. Welcome to our show. So I will start with the first question. You say that the day you realized you could die, you decided to change your life. How did your life change? That's true. That day I decided to open my heart and to listen. And uh, what I heard is that I couldn't uh, stay a lawyer anymore because the true way for me was to paint. So that's why I decided to stop everything, my stressful job, and uh, to get into painting. Painting every day, every night, and uh, just to, to breathe art. Yeah. Well, Geraldine, do you feel that when you paint, it's a form of therapy for you as well, physically, mentally, emotionally? I think it's a form of, of therapy, yes, of course, because you, you express your emotions, your feelings, and it's also a way to, to see positive things in your life. Your life, my life changed, and I just want to share this in my paintings. Very nice. You know, in my painting, when I see a color, sometimes a color makes me feel good. Maybe on a Monday it could be a yellow, on another day it's something else. Do you believe that the spectrums of color that you deal with helped heal you? Yes, of course. It's clear. Yeah, because um, I'm from that day, the day when I was 30 and I got this... Uh, my miracle. Uh, I decided to go on meditation, and that's where I get my colors. Because before painting, I would just want to be in peace in myself, and that's why the, those colors, those amazing colors, they come very easily for me. It's, I don't know where am I going when I paint. I just want to take some colors, and I let go. That's great. Geraldine, you studied in France. I mean, the greatest artists in the world all studied in Paris. Could you describe your education as an art student in the Grand uh, Day or wherever you went to school? I went to uh, the, the Beaux-Arts in France, in Paris. And I also um, uh, studied in a studio uh, in Paris uh, where um, a lot of painters, famous painters like Modigliani, Picasso went. Yeah. And it's very cool to be there because you can feel the energy of these very wow. painters. Very nice. I understand from your bio that you love to travel. 
what fascinates you most about your travels and the trips? Is it the people? Is it the architecture? Yes, when I I love traveling because I meet uh, people and it's a way to find humanity because um, when you see all those people, you can realize that you are sharing the same planet because whatever are the social conditions or the country you, you visit, you can see that those people share the same feelings, the same emotions, and it's important to get in touch with that. You mentioned uh, Modigliani and Picasso. I mean, who doesn't know them? But what other artists inspire you? I mean, I see a little of Gauguin in you. Not, you know, maybe just his style that was different than everybody else, kind of like a postmodernist, like Cezanne. But you don't yeah. have the, you know, the exact contours and configurations. You're just freer. So, like, you must have been inspired by somebody. Yes. I think the most interesting in paintings uh, in artworks I'm looking for is the the way to introduce light and brightness. Yeah. You know, I understand you said that um, in your travels, it's the essence of you meet the truth. It's the essence of humanity, and I'm sure it's reflected in your artwork. Is it possible that we could see some of your artwork now, and you could share with us? your emotions, your feelings, how truth comes out, and the essence of the meaning of life. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Can you show us a painting? Oh, wow, triptych. Magnificent. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Geraldine, share with us. <laughs> Thank you. Those one were our picture, I took the pictures in Japan. Those, those persons are women and um, I take photos of them, so they are real. It's not a painting, but I introduce uh, these photos in my artworks. So, and I want to, to replace them in the immensity of the nature. Beautiful, beautiful. You get, the, you get the feeling that you're right in the picture. You get the feeling that you want to be there, that peace, that tranquility. Is yeah. that what you were trying to capture? Yes, that's it. Exactly. On clouds. People are real. Your colors are beautiful. They're amazing. The indigo and purples and blues. Oh, very and very high to it also. Very ethereal, very spiritual. What yes. do you call this painting? I want to... to... to, to, to share... Yeah, go ahead. What I feel inside of me when I, yeah, just to say that those people, wherever they are, they are humans, and uh, they are humans linked with nature. That's why it's so important for me to 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 paint something very soft and deep, just to get the connection with the nature. One thing I read about you is you like opposites, soft and harsh, uh, peaceful and less tranquil. Yeah. Uh, can we, Erica, can we see another one of um, Geraldine's pictures? This is so beautiful. This is so amazing. Can you share it with us? Yes, those three, those three, three children. I took this photo in Britain, in France, and they were playing at the beach, and I. I just wanted to say that those children are free and their lives are so beautiful. So how to, to, to translate that in paintings? And I see the harshness of the separation, not harshness, the peaceful mm -hmm. of the water as you go further out in and then your skies, the yes. darkness. Abe, anything on the picture? You know what I like? She I always want to more green, blue, and orange, and yet it's so muted with gray that it all blends together like one color, and yet you see a tremendous contrast. So this is just lovely work, and the, and the white ripples in the water. 
Just mesmerizing. And, re- and to me, it represents myself playing with my grandchildren in the <laughs> ocean. Yeah. And many times I take them in with their clothing on. So I can't say my daughter is happy with that. But let's take a look at one more of your works and share that with us. Wow, yes. amazing. This one I, uh, is called um, Monk's Crossing. They were just working in a temple in Japan. And I wanted to, to show how they were um, going through the path in their mind to not only walking with their foot, but what was happening in their minds. Very nice. What is the most challenging part of being an artist for you? I would say that um, more nowadays, more than ever, it's very important that uh, artists uh, share their creativity and um, be really part of what's happening now. And they can show the way. So what I want to say is that uh, yes, another possibility is it's possible to change, to change our lives. Uh, whatever you are, you can do even little things. And that's what I want to, to do yeah, too. Want to do my part of the job. It's called painting in the pandemic. So we have to ask you, has the pandemic, COVID, Corona, whatever you call it in Portugal, has it changed you as an artist? Has it changed your mood? What's changed in your life in the last six months? And um, nothing really in the way I paint because this is still here. So I'm when I paint, I'm in a kind of bubble anyway. So uh, whatever is happening outside. But what I want to to share today that artists, as I am, as you are, can show new possibilities because we have time to think about that and we can express what we want we are free to to share what we want so i think it's very important i'm that- also curious geraldine and, and i don't know i didn't discuss this with Neil, but like, why would you leave paris for portugal i don't get it but i'm with you tell us the answer uh, for the sun for the sun <laughs> for the sun for the sun, for the sun? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gerald, Geraldine, it's written about you that through your art, it allows us to share your internal peace. What is your internal peace now? No. Um, or I'm, whenever you like to express it's it. It's a challenge because I'm a mom, so I have two kids, and uh, I have to get quiet and to have peace to share because sometimes days are crazy, you know, and that's the way I want to to stay myself, yeah. I know we have two grandchildren living with us, ages three and one, and <laughs> the one-year-old is a terror. He's into everything. And yes, when, I go into, <laughs> when I go into my studio, I just say, thank God. The but peace is living with your in-laws, I'll tell you that much. Kids exactly. are- <laughs> anyway, Geraldine, we're going to put you in the back room now. We're going to bring in Alfonso, and then we're going to bring you again. And think about what else you'd like to share in closing. Okay? Great. It's lovely to be with you. With you. Your work is great. And here's Alfonso Segovia. Okay, let me talk about Alfonso. Alfonso, you are such a happy person. Very happy. What? a career Alfonso has. Aside from painting, you also create sculptures, write novels and screenplays that include mysteries, fantasies, thrillers, romance, and horror themes. And as if that were not enough, you also write short fiction stories and poetry. Where do you find the time to do all this? You mix fancy. <laughs> what do you say? I missed that. He wants to explain it to you. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I I don't know. Maybe because I don't go to the bars too often. <laughs> he doesn't drink. Listen, from looking at your pictures and vivid imagination, you don't have to go to the bars. You already have it internally. Thanks. I, I, li- I like personally, I like bright colors. Even in, in bad moments of your life, yeah. I, I want to be alive. I want to feel alive. 
I, I, you, were, you were born in Colombia. I'm sorry. I'm so impressed that you're a writer that I wrote you a poem. Can I read it to you? Please. Please. What, 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 what? I don't know. If you play the shofar, <laughs> I, I play the shofar every morning. I, I play the guitar Rosh Hashanah. So I, I wrote, roses are red, violets are blue. I've seen your paintings, they look just like you. <laughs> Shakespeare wrote that. Do you, know, you write a lot better than that? But anyway, I didn't write any poems for you. But anyway, <laughs> you were brought up in Colombia. You were raised, you were born there. Has the Colombian environment affected your designs and colors? Has that remained with you before you came to America? That's a great question, you know, and, and especially Barranquilla, the city I was born. Right. I, I, uh, I uh, we celebrate the carnivals, and they are very famous, like the Brazilian carnival, and the colors, the colors are vibrant and inspiring. Right. And, and my, now that you mention it, yes, the colors of the carnivals inspire me to use those colors in my paintings. I just my, came. I just came back from the Rio Carnival, and you're 100 percent correct. I was mesmerized by the costumes, the colors, the pageantry. The fantasy. It's a fantasy world there. So it's been written about you that you have an endless dreaming soul. Can you tell us more about this imaginative soul that is within you? Well, everything started when I was a kid. I was like six, almost seven years old when I wrote my very first poem and I Paint my very first painting. I was in the kinder in the kindergarten, and those times was in the backyard. And my teacher was doing something in the blackboard, but I, my imagination went to a lemon tree, and I saw a beautiful monarch butterfly, and and then I start writing the poem and drawing the butterfly. And when she noticed that, she came to me. And she pulled my ears, like why I wasn't put attention to her. And then when she took the paper, she said, oh, this is beautiful. I'm going to take a picture. And that time, I, I, I don't know what was a picture. I was a kid. And then she called her brother and came with the tripod and the black cover. And for me, I was thinking it was a ghost coming out of there. So I have my children. When they took the, I tell the guy, don't take the picture. And, and the guy, yes, and he covered back. I said, don't take the picture. Yes, so smile. I was serious. And I, I got the pencil. And when he took the picture, you can see the photo. I'm serious. But I wrote something that cost me that lady to put me. Alfonso. OK, anyway, Alfonso, Abe had an opportunity to read a poem to you. Can you read us one of your poems? Yeah, read us something. Oh, OK. This is very uh, kind of sensual. Uh, this is based on my novel, Puchito. It's a trilogy. And that's when the hero, Puchito, is a little cricket that grows and search for his missing father. But Puchito means like a, a, a soul that can defeat any obstacles in life. Because it's a Disney movie already. Yes. And it's dedicated to the girlfriend. It's called I Imagine Being. I imagine being the warm breeze that rests in your hair, penetrating the depth of your tango mane, for them to sigh in despair. I imagine being the cold wind turning over you. You try to hug me when meeting, making you tremble under the dew. I imagine being a drop of water that is slides rapidly over your skin, lodging in every curve, going into every crease, later in pure love, all into sing. Well, I hope you like it. You do have a very uh, nice, pro. emotional, sensual. He does. What's the word, Abe? I'm looking for. He's. Uh, <laughs> it is. He has a very a sexual imagination, and it, <laughs> and it interprets into his art and his writing. You very flows beautifully as a writer. So anyway, Abe, something fascinating about Alfonso, and please yeah. tell us about it. When he came to America to earn a living, he became the first male nail technician. A nail technician. A nail technician, the first in America. He won many awards for this. 
And I just wanted to ask, and you could tell us about that. Did you paint your art onto the nails? Yes, yes. Really? I, 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 they put me in Hall of Fame. I can paint the whole. Oh my God! Look at that! Oh my God! Yes, he painted the whole NBA on the, on the nails. Yes, the the nails magazine put me in Hall of nails Fame magazine. Look at that. I, I could paint the whole uh, the whole uh, sea scene, including a flamingo, a musical note, in, wow. in, in, in 12 seconds. Amazing. And, you, and when you do someone's nails, do you also sign your name on every finger like that? I used to put my initial, and, and I used to use a special cover that I have some of my customers today, they kept it because they peel it and save it in little frames. So they have a good thing there going on. You know what? The Abe, I don't know, Abe, I don't know if you know this, but yeah. he has another famous name. Do you know what that name is? Yes, Andres Segovia, the classical guitar player. That's what a lot of people... That's what I thought you were in the first place, but you're not. You're, you're better than them. You're, you're much more talented. That's not even the name I wanted to give you. Oh, look at that. This, is one, this is one of the nails. This is the World Championship. Oh, in God. And this is a lot of detail. You can see the drops of water. It's a nail hanging from the tree. It's a nail tree. <laughs> and, 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 and this is all made of nails, fake nails. By the way, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad they were fake. So we, I have a private client for you. She's not allowed to go to the salon anymore. So if you want to go to Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the only one. And, and they move too. And they move. Oh, nail tree, look at that. Anyway, Abe, that's not the name I was referring to. He has another name. And he's known as the Jungle Man. The oh. Jungle Man. So, Alfonso, tell us how you got, I know it's because of your sculptures, but how did you get the name The Jungle Man? Okay, because my wife, I'm not wearing my suit today. She, she told me for maybe for another time, but I wear a suit according to my team. I was building on the nails. I, like, you saw the nails were like jungly, and the, right. name, and the name was given to me in Chicago because to walk eight feet, with my model, it took me like 25 minutes because people used to like to take photos and interview me and was a lady screaming, do you see the nails of the jungle guy, the jungle man? And that, the name came from there, the jungle man. Great to have a nickname. Neil's called the abstract art, abstract chemist. <laughs> you put science together with art, it's amazing. It's great. Anyway, also, could you just tell us a little bit before we see some of your works? In 1972 and 1976, you trained equestrian riders for the Olympics. No, Is that no, no. I was teaching fencing. Fencing. Oh, fencing. It's fencing. You're going to have to change your bio. I read it in your bio. Really? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, think I made this up? <laughs> Well, maybe the universe is telling you something. Maybe I will be an equestrian trainer in the future. Oh, or, maybe, or maybe it's <laughs> telling me I need glasses. <laughs> maybe you could train Antonio Banderas when he does, uh, you know, uh, Zorro too. Zorro, yes. Zorro. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we would like to see some of your works and if you sure. can explain them to us. Erica, take it away. Oh, uh, this is beautiful. Tell us yeah. about This is, this is the wife of the girlfriend. This one is called Ideal, Ideal, yes. And um, that painting is inspired also by my, by my poems, by the sensuality I carry in my soul. So I just describe every movement of the body. And also, if you notice, I paint miniatures. I am still using the miniatures I used to do on my nails on the butterfly wings. So if you have one of my paintings, you don't only have one painting, you have multiple paintings because it's a painting inside the painting and it's all right. painting inside the painting. Realism coming out of nature, which, uh, which you're described as, you combine both of them together. I find yeah. this painting amazing that, uh, go back for a second, Erica. Erica, I find it amazing that the proportion of her left hand extends all the way out. It only, if she put her hand down, we must probably go to her feet. Is this telling us that we could reach for the stars? What is the... What's the meaning of that? It's, it's like human, we can, uh, yes, that, you know what? You are the few people that notice that. And that's like human, we can embrace the world, but 
many they can do that. So that's what that's the reason I, I paint uh, elongated arms. If you can see my paintings, most of my paintings, the women have elongated arms, perhaps because the women uh, love so much. Very nice. Okay, Eric, I'm sorry I held you up before. Go ahead. Okay, let's see the next picture. Okay, while Eric is finding the next picture, um, tell us more. I saw that you did a sensual picture. I don't know if we're going to see it of a butterfly with the naked woman as the head of the butterfly of the body. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Oh, yes. <laughs> that was an inspiration of my wife when when we were young and beautiful. <laughs> You're so beautiful, Alfonso. I don't know so, about your wife. I haven't seen her, but I paint her, I paint her torso. I have a collection of that one. I have uh, two torsos with the Spanish guitar that we'll my father and law gave we'll it to me. A beautiful Spanish guitar that is over. He did a lot of those. Yeah, exactly. Erica, do you have another picture? We could move on in the meantime to something yeah. else. Yes, that, that one is, uh, the, this one, I mean, I have many favors, but this one is a special one. Uh, it's inspired by uh, the statues of, of uh, the Easter Island uh, and the coast of Chile, and also from my country and, uh, and the Department of Huila, uh, the San Agustin statues. And I call the sea guardians. Uh, they are like um, uh, monoliths uh, protecting the entrance of the sea and the entrance of the territory. Beautiful. Very nice. Let's move on to one more picture. Oh, that's the one you were talking about. Because that's the one that's vivid in my mind. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, that one inspired me so many poems too. I have a collection of that one. I have, uh, as you see, as you see um, this painting, you can see uh, other ones, but double and the center, I put like a, a, a nice uh, basket with flowers and the other half an Spanish guitar that my father-in-law gave it to me. It's an old Spanish guitar. It's 120 years old and it's still ringing like a bell. Beautiful. You know, Looking at your works, one can really see your vivid imagination. We're going to bring Geraldine back in with us now to wrap up with both of you. Hi, Geraldine, again. Hi. It's really, Hello. both of you are amazing. It's an honor for Abe and I to be able to interview Absolutely. you. I hope I hope we could meet you in person one day uh, and really get to know you. So, Geraldine, what would you like to share with the audience and one of the things that I want Erica to put up is your website, a phone number where they could reach you. So what words would you like to leave your audience with? Yeah, I would like to say just a few words, just that life is short. And please open your hearts, open your hearts, open your eyes and enjoy life. Feel free to do what you want, what inspires you. Beautiful. That's amazing. And everybody, they could see on the th uh, screen, it's GeraldineLally.com to be able to reach her. And you really both have similarities in your works in the sense, Geraldine, yours comes from the heart and the feeling, and Alfonso's just comes from the imagination from within the head. Alfonso, how would you like to leave um, our audience with what words of inspiration? I always... It's Everyone my, should be a jungle man. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since the world has to turn out to, to, to be living in the new normal, uh, it doesn't stop me personally. So I want to be an example for people to not stop for anything. Just keep going. Look at me. I changed the transitions of my paintings. Instead of painting the women and my statues and all the stuff, I'm painting like, you see, uh, this one that is called life, based on what we live in today, this abstract, and you see it's still relating the wings of the butterflies of the moths, but it's kind of dark, but it's not so dark, but at the end, you can see the light, and it's light. That's what I try to project in my life to other people, so don't and, give up. And you, and you also could re be reached at Alfonso, Segovia.com. 
Yes. Um, from my point of view, I think you're both amazing. You both have fascinating stories. You both went in many different directions from an attorney to an artist because of a life-changing event for you, Alfonso. So many things, writing, sculptures. Um, from Abe and I, we really wish you both safe health. Um, it's a tough world out there. In New York. We'd like you to say something, both of you, about uh, you know, uh, Louis Ventura and uh, Alcindor Safira, Safira Ventura Gallery. If you could say one thing about what they've done for you, aside from this show. Well, I'll give a poem. Roses are red, violets are black. We <laughs> both hope that you we'll can come right back, back. <laughs> to join us and to see us. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Please keep in contact with us. And you should know that people, you could contact them and they will be able to see this video. You could send it out on your emails and wherever you like. God bless both of you. Thank you very much for joining us, Abe. It's always a pleasure. America and Safira and, and Abe, Neil, blessings, everything wonderful. I appreciate your support. And God bless you all, and the universe bless you all as also. Have a great weekend and a happy ride. And, and to you, and to you, Geraldine, the miracle of miracles. I believe in miracles. You are a living miracle. You should hey, enjoy your children. We had the we had the pleasure of seeing your daughter run around while you were trying to do an interview. Your calmness on screen was amazing. I don't know what it's like off screen. But anyway, God bless both of you. Stay on. You have to stay on for one minute before we go off air. Bye, everybody. Okay.